Uh, speaking to you now is uh, Jamie Arthur. Jamie, um, can you just give us a, a, a summary of boxing from the Jamie Arthur's point of view of the last 12 months or so? Yeah, it's been interesting 12 months. Um, we now have five current professional boxers, um, all working hard. You know, we've got good camaraderie, uh, a good group of boys, all learning, understanding the, the, the change from amateur to professional ranks. It's, um, like I say, it's, uh, it's a bit of a transition. You know, and the boys need to to understand what it's like. So sometimes it takes longer than others. You know, but um, the boys are doing well. They're putting in the hard work. They're learning, and hopefully we're gonna have a busy year ahead and uh, some good wins coming forward. Um, one big change over the last 12 months or so, perhaps a little bit longer, that's affected you directly. I think is the is the fact that um, trainers can now train amateurs as well as pros. I mean, how, how much of a problem is sort of politics within boxing in general? How, how much problems are given you personally? Yeah, it, it has been hard work, especially when they first introduced the the rule where amateur boxers, or sorry, professional uh, registered coaches, managers, trainers weren't allowed to work in the amateur corners. That was a nightmare because I had a gym full of amateur boxers that I were I were not no longer able to corner and train or even go into the changing rooms so that had a big, big impact on on my gym as a whole with regards to amateur boxing it kind of took the heart out of wanting to put on the shows um because a lot of the work that we do for the amateur boxing is for nothing you know it comes out of my pocket as with the professional boxing you know, we're not in it to make money but when you're fighting politics all the time and it feels like you're knocking your head up against a brick wall then it kind of takes the love out then it makes it really really hard to be able to to carry on and 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 want to drive forward with, with grassroots boxing in Wales. And am I right in saying that actually it has a, a negative impact on, on amateur boxing and professional boxing because trainers are forced to either pick one or the other? Yeah, one code or the other. Let's face it, with regards to all amateur boxers, when they initially start out, their dream is to be world champion. You know, and we're not talking about amateur world champion. We're talking about professional world champions. That's what everybody wants to do. So in order to take that divide away where, or sorry, in order to add that divide where amateurs no longer have the opportunity to be able to go and spar with professionals, learn off professionals, and have that transition from amateur boxing to professional boxing, you know, that kind of puts a cap on it. Let's face it, like I say, with regards to amateur boxing, amateur boxing, I know it goes up to, um, with WSB, up to five rounds now, or senior um, amateur boxing, which is free freeze. Our main game, our main game, and main goal is to be on the the, the big screen, you know, and, and Sky Sports and uh, Channel Five and BBC ITV, wherever we can get to be able to showcase our talents, you know. And when you get to the stage where professional boxing is your job, you want to be earning as much money as possible, and you can't have that with the amateur ranks. So I think that there needs to be a better transition with regards to going from the amateur ranks to the paid ranks and giving the kids the opportunity to be able to learn both formats. Boxing across Britain has seen a massive rise in the last 12, 24 months of white collar boxing, which is, is it varies from fairly um, well organized to sometimes pretty chaotic. Um, but it has given certain boxers opportunities which they wouldn't have had normally and it also encourages people to box who would never normally box. Yes. However, there is a bit of controversy regarding the medical side of it yeah. and whether it's safe, whether it's regulated. I mean, what's your opinion of white collar boxing in general? Yeah, you just hit the nail on the head there with regard to regulations. Um, let's face it, white collar boxing has been around for a good couple of years now and you have workers if you like whether they be white collar workers or blue collar workers you have guys that are going into a gym for maybe a 10 to 12 week training program in order to try and box semi-professional um it's a bit dangerous in my eyes you know because at the end of the day with regards so you can't learn the code of boxing within that short period of time so that's the beginning side of things with regards to amateur box uh, sorry white collar boxers and i don't feel that It's medicated enough to be able to, uh, uh, it's, no, medicated would be the wrong word, I suppose. I don't feel that it's overlooked enough to be able to uh, um, get the right sort of medical support, i.e. the brain scans, the blood tests and what have you, because when you're getting hit in the head, you know, with a duration of fights, then you've got the opportunity to, to have injuries. And I feel that that should be something that needs to be tightened up a little bit. 
when you look at the amateur boxing code, especially when you're going to an international level and you've got to take off the head guards, okay, it is only three three-minute rounds, but there are no MRIs every year. If they did introduce the MRIs as amateur boxing, I feel that would be the end of amateur boxing because of the substantial cost with regards to the MRIs. So I think that uh, the British Boxing Board of Control has got it right in one way, you know, to be able to make sure that you're correctly med uh, correctly um, covered with regards to the, the medicals. Um, but I think that that white-collar boxing and amateur boxing, they need to have that, a little bit of um, more in-depth support of the, the medicals going forward. As you mentioned earlier, Jamie, you've got a, a number of professional boxers now. Um, you've still got a few amateur boxers. Um, what can we expect from yourself and your stable of fighters over the next six to 12 months or so? Firstly, we need to get the kids out more regular. You know, like Chris Sanic has been brilliant for Welsh boxing because he's given the youngsters the opportunity to be able to, to fight more regular. So Chris and Jamie, and it, let's face it, they've had to go dig in their own pockets to be able to make sure that the shows can keep going ahead and build up Welsh talent and uh, talent in the, in the Bristol and the South West area as well. Um, personally, myself and Matt Jones from S3, we will, we're looking to be putting on our own promo promotions um, around about the October time. And again, what we want to try and do is just give kids the opportunity to be able to box more regular. So wherever that be, the kids that we have in the gym or other kids within Wales as well, we want to be able to give them the opportunity to take the onus off selling the tickets all the time because as, as you mentioned in the earlier interview, ticket sales for youngsters starting out, that's the bugbear of their professional career. M me personally, I don't believe that it should, the emphasis shouldn't just be on the ticket sales. I think that it should be down to the promoter more to be able to promote the event and sell the tickets and bring in the sponsors and then the boxer be more concerned with training and fighting. You know, so that's the route that we're looking to go down. We're gonna give it our best shot, see how things work out. You know, we've got a good, good business plan that that we feel um, could make a big impact with regards to promotion in Wales. Um, so yeah, so like I say, myself and Matt Freeman from S3 Advertising are looking to get our ball rolling around about October with our own promotions, which are only the ferocious.